angry guy here and women are fearful men no longer care about them Women are fearful men no longer care about them. Guys, as you may recall, I recently put out an article, recently discussed an article, where we talked about women are, a woman examines potential risk for women in society shifting away from traditional relationships. And I talked about the article, and I also talked about a video where a woman basically said that men walking away from Western society, men not having relationships with women, men choosing to essentially go their own way are a danger to women, their survival and their ability to thrive and continue to grow in Western society. I constantly try to emphasize that in reality, women are absolutely constantly trying to ensure that men are focused on them at every given moment of the day. I talk about the notion that the thing that a woman fears the most is not a man that is filled with hate, but is but a, instead a man that is filled with indifference. When you're indifferent to something, when you're indifferent to someone, that means you do not care about them. It means that you don't care if they are here or if they are not. You don't care, care if they li live or if they get deleted. You don't care at all. You will allow everything and anything to happen. If you look at the article and the, and the arguments that some of these women are using, they're saying that we can see a significant loss of women's rights. We can see loss of women being able to access university at, for, at for an affordable rate. We can see the loss of a variety of things women women's uh women's ability to survive thrive and feel protected and of course they're naming blaming and shaming men for this because men no longer want to provide or protect these are the same women who say that Men should never speak to a woman they don't know. They should never approach a woman that they don't know. They should never talk to a stranger. That is a woman. They should never even glance in the direction of a woman on the street or in a gym. If they see a woman walking down the street, because of the way society is, they should cross the street so that the woman feels more safe. Women are, have literally created a society where they've told men to stay away from them unless you're the kind of guy that they want to be in a relationship with. And now that men have gotten the memo and men are either walking away and going overseas or they're staying home, playing video games, watching TV, focusing on their leisure, these women are characterizing these men as dangerous. They're suggesting that these men should be shamed. They're further pushing for more isolation. So they don't even realize that they're actually, their actions will only lead to these men further being isolated from society, which is okay because these men have essentially given up on society. They think that they're going to shame these men back into the public space. They're going to shame these men back into the workforce. They're going to shame these men back into relationships with women. And of course, women cannot go backwards. So they're going to shame these men into going out, becoming millionaires, and then finding women whom they can hand this money over to. They're going to shame these men back into the dating market as they continue to attack men in the dating markets. But you have to understand that this is why I always use the concept of functional insanity. Functional insanity is essentially how you describe people who are able to more or less continue to function in society, but at their core, they are insane. Modern women have created a society where increasingly no one wants to live except for them. And as men are getting, getting ready to completely, com completely disconnect from society, Women are now preparing to go on the offense. I've said this before that feminism, the label may go away, but the legacy of feminism would live on forever. And you will witness now as women 
feminist women will literally say feminism got every got us everything we wanted. Now let's fight it together. I said that this would happen years ago, but they will still. The craziest thing is you will see women fighting for things like reproductive rights, you know, to avoid the repeal of no fault divorce, to continue the pushing the welfare state, while denouncing feminism. Because they'll say that feminism is the cause of them losing these things, and it no longer serves a purpose, and they don't want it anymore. But they're all, but everything they're fighting for is feminist. Why? Because they're demanding traditionalism. You have non-traditional women who want traditional men. You see, that's the only way that this society can actually function and continue to operate. That's the reason why. We have a society where it was pushed upon us that for every man there sh there is a woman, and one man sh a man should marry only one woman. These are not natural things. People don't want to accept. Men do not want to accept that by nature we are not monogamous. We are not monogamous. All right. Throughout history, something like only thirty percent of all men reproduced, while eight, it was thirty to forty percent. I think it was actually forty. Was it? It was between 30 and 40% of all men that reproduced throughout history, while 80% of women reproduced. So less than half of all men ever reproduced throughout most of history, while 80% of women reproduced. How is this possible? Because most men did not reproduce. There's a lot of guys walking away. The only way that society was able to function and survive and thrive was creating a society where every man believed that they at least had the opportunity to have a to, to have a wife, to have children, to have stability. That, of course, has been has been ripped away with women's liberation and women gaining, you know, not only equal footing to men, but but superior footing to men. Women have more rights, more more help, more benefits, more programs to to, to aid them. They're bailed out of every bad decision that they make, while men are held accountable for every, not every not only every bad decision that they make, but the bad decisions of others. Men are not only the gatekeepers of relationships, men are also the gatekeepers of society. A, a, a society without its men is no longer a society, it's a wasteland. That's how you get invaded by aliens. But the aliens don't have to come from outer, say, outer space, they will come from overseas. You need a traditional society, or rather, you need men, traditionalist men, for a society to survive. If you do not have traditional men in society, if men abandon traditionalism, that is a collapsed society. You think I'm wrong? Look at what's happening in other countries where men are refusing to marry and the birth rate is collapsing. Now, of course, there are people saying that, well, what we need to do is we need to promote single motherhood and encourage more women to have children without the men. That doesn't make any sense. It's the men that pay the that pay the taxes, that fund the programs. And these countries believe that they can just keep on living on debt. Japan thinks that they can just keep on living on debt and shifting the cost and burden to other countries. That won't work forever. The reason why we have hyperinflation in Western society right now in the United States is because of all the funny money that has been printed on debt that we can never pay back. But no one wants to admit to it. They all want to play games. They want to all want to act like, oh, it's going to be okay. It's not. People can barely buy food right now. Guys, I literally just saw something on Uber, on Uber Eats. They're literally, guys, a 12 bucket from KFC costs $36 right now. A 12 bucket from KFC costs $36 for 12 bucket pieces of chicken, not a meal, no biscuits, no gravy, no coleslaw, just the chicken. At a lot of places right now, a combo, so a burger, a drink, and some fries from McDonald's costs $16. This is the result of hyperinflation. Guys, women can't win this one. What are they going to, they think that naming, shaming, blaming men is going to do it. It won't stop them. They don't know. They have no other way of winning. They don't know how to get a man and they have nothing to offer. They cannot cook. They cannot clean. They, they bring no value into the relationship. 
They believe they, they are, are the relationship because they say they are the table, yet men are the gatekeepers of relationships. Guys, it's over. It's really over. It's really over. What are you going to do? You know, I mean, oh, these men are dangerous. Guys, this is what they want. What they want is they want men to go and to feel scared of walking around in society being single. So how does this, how does this actually work, ladies? You shame men and you make them even more fearful and being, of being perceived as, as creeps and losers because they're single. And you think that there's going to be like a social shift to basically force men to marry and go and get the million dollars that you want? You know, because that's a form of forced servitude, and that that doesn't make any sense. Oh, but you okay? Shaming them is going to force them to go back to relationships. No, that's only going to cause them to isolate more. Eventually, guys, they'll come after video games, just like they did in Rome when the Roman Empire began to collapse. And Julius Caesar said that single men were the worst, worse than all the criminals in all of Rome. And they basically barred the men from going to the Colosseum and uh, other public events. And during the winter time, they made the single men run in the streets as a form of punishment and humiliation. And even then, they still wouldn't marry. And then fast forward like a couple hundred years, or was it like 100, 200 years? And the men were no longer fighting in the military. Men would no longer, you know, for, would no longer enlist in the military. And so they had to hire mercenaries and the kingdom became very poor because, you know, of course the men weren't working anymore. So they, there was no, uh, there was no income coming in and the emperor tried to use, like uh, pay the mercenaries using uh, the emperor tried to pay the mercenaries using portions of land. The, the mercenaries realized that the emperor had no clothes, called his bluff and pillaged the kingdom, plunging us into 1000 years of, the uh, of, of 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 the dark era, you know, you know th th that's that's basically it, you know, plunging us into one thousand years of darkness. Welcome to the dark ages, and the dark ages were really more dark than people believe. Believe, you know, there were some ups and downs. Of course, there was some things like architecture that happened, but there people actually ended up going back to almost caveman days at the beginning of the dark era. We're talking about living in caves and eating squirrel meat, and of course, witchcraft really made a surgence during that period of time. It was horrible, and we also know that there were things such as. Uh, you know, extraordinary sickness that 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 occurred during that time. Everything went downhill. I mean, guys, you have to understand that this is exact, exactly where we're heading towards a cultural dark age, and it's women who are leading us into this. And of course, they realize that you know, if they keep on pushing and they don't care, they're headed for the Handmaid's Tales. But you know what? God bless them, guys. What do you think regarding this? I want to hear your exact thoughts on this because I am curious for your insight women are fearful men no longer care about them i want to know what you guys think in the comments regarding this let's talk about it there like the video if you like it don't forget to subscribe and if you like the video share the video and just remember that all roads lead to mwa men walking away and cheers